All right. Quorum being present, this meeting is hereby called to order. But I ask that everyone rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Just checking the room, do we have any recognitions, presentations, anything for tonight? Moderator? Yes, sir. Uh, Come on over. The town of Hampton has been very fortunate to have a number of people who have given enormous amounts of their time. They were always extremely sad when things change, and for some reason they leave Hampton. We don't know why that is. But there is one person who has served for a number of years, a huge number, 36 years as a library trustee. And for some reason, she feels it's time to leave him. And we are here to recognize what she has done. A resident of over half a century, her husband served as board of selectmen, and I believe with my father, Rick, just before. I went on board the year Bob went on, 1987. Okay. Trained you well. He did. So I would like to ask Beth Berger to come up here and accept this award. I 
HSB fund just do an admirable job. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, and I still remember the time my grandmother started to make a political announcement and think the teller cut her short. <laughs> so let it be said that I didn't do that to you. Well done, Nick. <laughs> um, we've got recognitions. We must now read the warrant. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of Hamden qualified to vote in town affairs <coughs> to meet at Thornton W. Burgess Middle School, 85 Wilbraham Road, Hamden, on Monday, May 8, 2023, at 7 o'clock in the evening, and then to hear on, act on the articles included. You are hereby directed to serve this warrant by posting an attested copy thereof at each of the places designated by the town. Hereof, fail not and make due return of this warrant with your doings thereon to the town clerk on or before the time of the meeting aforesaid, given under, under our hands this 24th day of April 2023. I, constable for the town of Hamden, have on this date posted copies of the warrant for the town of Hamden to be held on May 8, 2023 at 7 p.m. in all the places as designated in the town of Hamden. Signed, Edward T. Poulin, Constable, date 427-23. The warrant being properly served, the formal reading of the warrant is waived and the posted warrant shall be part of the record. The meeting will begin first with a report or update, State of the Union, if you will, from the advisor. Carol? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hi, everyone. My uh, usual State of the Union. Um, before we go through all the warrant articles, I did want to give you an overview of the advisory committee's process this year and some of the key considerations that you'll find as we go through the articles, particularly related to the town budget. The advisory committee, who by the way is up here, Doug Boyd, Sandra Sheehan, Heather Turcott, Kathy Pasolano is home ill. Um, we make up the five members of the advisory committee. Um, we've been meeting regularly since the end of January on Monday nights down in the Belleville room. Um, very exciting stuff happening down there. Um, <laughs> we've asked uh, all the departments to submit a level service budget to ensure that we could continue to provide the quality and variety of services that the town currently delivers to its citizens. And the departments did a great job of providing all of the information we needed, and we're very diligent in bringing us thoughtful and prudent budgets. We also work collaboratively with the town treasurer, the town accountant, town administrator, and the board of selectmen throughout our budget process. And in fact, the treasurer and the town accountant were at nearly every one of our advisory meetings and continue to provide invaluable insight and perspective on the town's finances and operations to us. The budget expenditures we're recommending tonight total $15,829,566. That re represents a 4.5% increase in the operating budget. The advisory committee supports all the line item amounts identified in the budget after spending a lot of time to understand the needs of the departments. Um, in terms of overall budget figures, this year includes an adjustment for our non bargained town employees in our ongoing efforts to ensure that the town, as an employer, maintains competitive wages and is responsive to concerns about inflation. Um, the Board of Selectmen and the Advisory jointly discussed and recommended a 4% COLA for this year. So you'll see those salary adjustments um, in those line items along with our contractual commitments to other salaries. There are several other factors impacting the budget this year, including some expense increases um, for our mandatory contribution to county retirement, um, employee benefits costs that um, increase due to a change in the town's contribution and an increase in our, our enrollment. We've got um, required PFAS testing for the water supply near the transfer station. Um, next year is a full audit year, so you'll see expenses go up in that area as well. And we had some shared services expenses for our Board of Health. In addition, there are um, a few additional staffing or staffing uh, increase in hours in some departments including uh, parks and recreation, 
you'll see the addition of a director at thirty two hours a week the senior center director the fire department clerical and the principal assessor all are also showing increased hours for those roles you may notice this year for the first time that i can remember we we didn't have a couple of numbers to fill in in the green sheets that went out we did not have a final school assessment figure ready to go when we went to print but we do have one for tonight that we'll share but i wanted to give you a little context for why that happened and let you know that we've worked jointly with the wilbraham finance committee to come to an assessment figure doug and i as well as maura ryan who's our school committee representative have been attending the school committee's budget subcommittee and have been meeting with them weekly for several months and there are also wilbraham finance committee representatives there as well during those meetings it was clear that wilbraham was going to have some difficulty supporting a substantial increase in the school assessment the original operational and capital budget that the school committee ultimately voted posed a major problem for wilbraham the original hand in assessment based on that budget was not as dramatic and impactful to our final budget figures but as you may know there are several factors that play into the school assessment figures including enrollment there has been a shift over the last several years so that hammond students represent just under 20 percent of the total school enrollment which means that wilbraham's costs have increased proportionally more than ours there are other state formulas that factor in for minimum local contributions and the truth is that the funding for regional schools in this state is woefully inadequate and this year wilbraham was particularly challenged and in other years it's been hamden so the advisory committee and the wilbraham finance committee we have a great working relationship and we have a lot of history with each other and in that spirit we came together to determine a consensus assessment figure that both towns could support and be presented and we presented those to the school committee and to the district staff we asked them to reconsider their first budget looking at some alternative funding sources and operational efficiencies as well as a request to handle their capital items in a different time frame or to support those through other funding means so in turn the district reworked their budget and issued both towns new assessment letters and this resulted in the original request to us being reduced by one hundred and fifty five thousand dollars so the new figure which advisories were recommending tonight which wasn't in your original green sheet is eight million ninety three thousand three hundred and fifty six dollars and rick will share those again when he goes through the budget um, while it was a challenging process at the 11th hour, it proved to be a really good example of how the towns and the school district can work well together. And I would like to say that, that Doug was a major driver of pulling the adv advisory and Wilbraham Finance together and really led the effort to have a collaborative and constructive process that avoided some potential complications for each town at their town meetings. Um, it was a, quite, a, quite a work of art. Um, so, and finally, uh, as is typical in our process at the annual town meeting, we anticipate deferring the articles relative to any transfer to stabilization and any possible reduction in the tax rate until our fall town meeting. At that time, we'll have a better sense of the free cash available from the current fiscal year that can be used for those purposes and can also factor in decisions about potential capital items. The Board of Selectmen, the Treasurer, the Accountant, and advisory all work collaboratively to make those determinations to ensure that we can prudently finance capital items and stabilize any potential tax increases to the best of our ability. So that's it for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, we do have a few housekeeping items. I actually jumped the gun getting Carol up here because I'm so anxious to have her company. Uh, but we got a few things to talk about. First and foremost, please turn off your cell phones or silence them. This is the most important one to me. Uh, free and open discussion with respect to all viewpoints. To say anything at town meeting takes a little bit of courage. To know that your friends and neighbors may not agree with what you say makes it even more difficult. And it's always important to remember that the people you see here tonight are the people you're going to see tomorrow. And you want to be able to wave, smile, look them in the eye. And 
hopefully make it a good day. So please be mindful and respectful of your friends and neighbors. All questions must be addressed through the moderator. Please keep all questions and discussions on point. The question may be, may be moved by a member or moderator subject to a vote and or the moderator's discussion. Uh, please come to the microphone when asking or answering a question or making a statement. Uh, it, uh, it makes it easier for the clerk to track those who are here. Um, and one last thing, um, I want to thank Herb Foley. I think he stepped out of the room. Every year, Herb does a fantastic job getting this room set up so that we can um, have our meeting here. And Herb, is the only request of us tonight was please be sure you leave everything where it is because he has interns coming in tomorrow to put it all away. And apparently, he likes to keep them busy. <laughs> okay, now we can get started. Article 1, to hear the annual reports of the officers of the town and any committee whose duty it may be to report to said, at said meeting and act thereon or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, I move that the annual town reports as contained in the annual town report for the year 2022 be accepted as printed. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Does the advisory committee have any have a recommendation? Advisory recommends favorable action. Is there any discussion? I do see a question. Mr. Or, moderator, I did not receive my town report, so I will be unable to vote on the reports, which I cannot read because the town report is not available to me. I do understand or found this afternoon that there was an issue with the printer that their reports are not available for the meeting tonight. That said, the town report is a document that looks, is the annual town report, in my opinion, is a document that looks backward. This meeting is a meeting that looks forward. And what we are here to accomplish is, as the town meeting history so aptly structures for us to do, is how we want the community to look going forward. Town meeting reports will be available. They will have a summary of the prior year's operations and what boards have accomplished. Um, that said, there is, there is the discussion. This requires a majority vote to accept the reports, uh, to accept and hear report. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The moderator declares a majority. Article two, annual operating budget to see if the town will vote to fix the salary and compensation of all elective officers of the town as provided for by section 108 of chapter 41 of the general laws and to raise and appropriate the necessary sums to cover same and rate to raise money and make appropriations to defray the expenses of the town for the period of July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024 or take any other action relative thereto. Motion. I move that the sums of money shown in the column entitled Fiscal 2024 Draft Recommendations of the Supplementary Report and Recommendations of the Advisory Committee be raised and appropriated for the specific purposes designated and that the same be expended only for such purposes, each number being considered a separate appropriation and that the town raise and appropriate such sums as may be required to defray said charges for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Does the advisory have a recommendation for their own motion? They do. The advisory recommends favorable action. Okay. I am now going to read to you, you, for those of you who have your green sheets, I am now going to read the requested and recommended numbers. I am only going to do each department's total. Um, I will check the room, so if you do have a question within the account, we will stop so you can ask the question. But again, I'm only going to be reading the total requested and recommended. General government, item one, accountant, town account, requested 78,917, recommended 78,917 dollars. Article two, item two, advisory, total advisory, 5,991 requested, 5,991 recommended. Board of Appeals, 8,926 requested, 8,926 recommended. Four, assessors, board of, total assessors, requested 148,176, 
recommended one hundred forty eight thousand one hundred seventy six dollars item five building a department expenses total building department requested one hundred thirty five thousand six hundred eleven recommended one hundred thirty five thousand six hundred eleven six county retirement requested seven hundred seven hundred nine thousand two hundred fifty five dollars recommended seven hundred nine thousand two hundred fifty five dollars seven insurance total requested seven hundred fifty one thousand seventeen dollars recommended seven hundred fifty one thousand seventeen dollars one okay so far oh, okay our um, item eight law and claims ninety five thousand requested ninety five thousand recommended moderator one hundred dollars requested i didn't actually ask for anything but you're throwing it in um, 100 requested 100 recommended planning board 10 total planning board thirty nine thousand sixty five dollars requested thirty nine thousand sixty five dollars recommended 11 board of registrars total registrars thirteen thousand nine hundred requested thirteen thousand nine hundred recommended selectmen 12 total selectmen one hundred fifty eight thousand one hundred five requested one hundred fifty eight thousand one hundred five recommended 13, tax collector, total tax collector, 87,987 requested, 87,987 recommended. 14, town clerk, total town clerk, $95,973 requested, $95,973 recommended. Town report, $3,600 requested and recommended. 16, treasurer, total treasurer, 87,761 recommended, requested, the same number, 87,761 recommended. Veterans benefits, 17, 20,000 requested, 20,000 recommended. 19, town administrator, 100,000 requested, 100,000 recommended. Total general government, $2,539,384 requested, $2,539,384 recommended. Any questions? We doing okay still? Okay, we'll keep it moving. General Town Services, 20, Academy Hall Maintenance, 4,500 requested and the same amount recommended. 21, Cemetery Commission, total cemetery commission, 40,122 requested, $40,122 recommended. 22, Conservation Commission, total conservation commission, $40,599 requested, $40,599 recommended. Transfer station, item 23. What? Was there a question? Yes, thank you. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm holding you up now. Back on the cemetery commission, I was curious as to is it open for four hours, four days a week? Is that what that schedule is? Is there anybody here from the Cemetery Commission who submitted the budget number? If not, does the advisory committee have a note on it? The question was four days a week. The town hall, town hall offices are also open four days a week. Okay. Does, does that help you? They're open. They're open. Maybe not as many hours, but at least the very least the same days the townhouse is open. Just seems finding grades. No, not any better than 20 years ago when they moved here, and I was curious as to what the job entails. Yeah, um, I don't believe we have a cemetery commissioner here. I don't see anybody. Um, so that might be something you take up with them separately. I understand the question, and it's, it's reasonable, but within the context of the budget. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Nope, you're absolutely welcome. So if we, so let's, let's repeat cemetery commission, just make sure. 40,122 recommended, requested, same amount requested and recommended. 22, Conservation Commission, total Conservation Commission. For, uh, we've done this, I'm sorry, but we'll keep going. 40,599 requested, 40,599 recommended. Transfer station, total transfer station, 100,000 requested, $100,000 recommended. Yes, sir. Um, I said, uh, what, Peter, why don't you go so we'll keep in order. It was first, okay. And could you please state your name? Eric Blake, Main Street. Okay. Uh, just wondering what's the uh, reason for the jump? 
PFAS testing? This, this is related to the PFAS testing that I referred to earlier, required testing on the um, water supply. So, just in, in short, you know, when the, when the landfill was capped and closed back in 93 and converted to a transfer station, from before that even happened, water testing was required and it's been ongoing in different forms or fashions for the last 30 years. And this is a new test being required in the state. Um, Peter, you still have a question or are you good? You've, uh, you've stumbled onto the hornet's nest of the mandate, and uh, it's a beautiful thing to pass the law, it's another thing to fund it, and they seem to do very little of the second. <laughs> School building repairs. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Was there anybody else who we good now? Uh, Connie. Uh, Connie Wet Main Street. Does this have anything to do with the uh, solar system that's being put in? No. Uh, the answer is no. Um, hold it, Dick, please. As a clarification, none of this money from this account goes to the operations of the transfer station. It's strictly the mandatory testing, and that went up because of this PFAS by they found. It had nothing to do with the operations. That's fun. all funded out of a revolving enterprise fund from the, the bag sales. Yeah, and if you, if you do know, the only line included inside of 23 is 23-2 um, monitoring testing, so it is monitoring testing alone. Um, 24, school building repairs, 15,000 requested, $15,000 recommended. 26, library, total library, $196,669 requested, $196,669 recommended. Town events. 4,500 requested, 4,500 recommended. Office equipment, total office equipment, $90,000 requested, $90,000 recommended. Still doing okay? Okay. Item 30, parks and recreation, total parks and recreation, $132,290 requested, $132,290 recommended. Roger. Yes, sir. Peter. Yes. Peter Hatch. Um, just curiosity, how come we need it now? A director for the fire director department now. We already had one before. Why are we creating a new position? Do we have somebody from Park and Rec? I see. Yes, please. Um, are you? Hi, my name's Terry Ford. I live on Summer Road. Um, I've been a park director, on the park director board for seven out of the last ten years. During that course of time, um, the Parks Department essentially has two employees. We have a part-time administrative assistant who's in the office, and we have a maintenance person in the park. All the directors are, are um, volunteer related positions, but we're volunteers, we all have our jobs and our positions. Over the last seven years or so, our, our offerings are, are being limited. Um, this was our first year that we weren't even able to field a baseball team for a kid in hand, and we're becoming heavily reliant upon reaching out to other um, towns for assistance and joining teams, and, and we're struggling. We are really struggling to keep reliability to our programs. Now, it's not just programs for kids. We, we do run athletic programs for um, First grade blacks from kindergarten up to eighth grade, and then there's also some programs for adults. You know, there's there's no basketball, there's a pickleball. Um, we also maintain the park facilities. We have Memorial Park, which is um, you know, limited in size. It's a wonderful little park, but it's small, and there's limited opportunities to expand and do anything else there. We do also have TWD. If that could be put to use, that would be a great benefit to the town. Um, and right now, there's two baseball fields where there's nothing going on. There is a basketball court that is in desperate need of repair. So we really need a person who is going to devote themselves on a full-time position, not only to develop additional programs, but hopefully expand our offerings not only locally among the kids, but from adult programs and also to reach out and work with other communities to make more of an offering. Our, our sports programs are basically basketball, 
um, soccer, and baseball. And this year we don't even have a baseball program. Our kids have to play, you know, whatever they might go right next year. And the hope is you get a person who will be full time, who's available on weekends, who's available on nights, who's able to write grants. We can raise the budget by grant writing and offer more to the both the adults of hand and, and, and for the kids here. Because at some point, we're treading water, but we're, we're safe too. You know, we're getting to that point where it's retiring out and it's treading and it's eventually going to be hit. Okay. If we, all right, I was going to say, I'm not, I think that would, whether you agree or not, at least you got to an answer your question. You good to go, Peter? I did agree with the program because there's another person involved, but I'll tell you that now is the moving game. <laughs> like the way you think. 30. Let, let me, let's just hit the total again. Total parks and recreation, 132,290. Uh, requested 132,290 is the recommended number. Townhouse maintenance 32. Total townhouse maintenance 87,000 requested, 87,000 recommended. 34. Ambulance 363,878 dollars requested, 363,878 dollars recommended. Item 35. Gasoline. Total gasoline 60,000 dollars is requested and it is also the recommended amount. Street lighting, item 36, 30,000 requested, $30,000 recommended. 37, Council on Aging, total Council on Aging, $199,099 requested, $199,099 recommended. 38, Senior Center, total Senior Center, $40,181 requested, $40,181 recommended. Line, uh, line 39, Historical Commission, $400 is the requested and recommended amount. Total General Town Services, $1,404,238 requested, $1,404,238 recommended. Um, all set so far? Head to the Highway Department. Superintendent Salary, $101,379 recommended is requested and the same amount is recommended. Demar Departmental payroll, $289,736 requested, $289,736 recommended. Tree ward, total, line 41, tree ward, total tree ward, $60,270 requested, $60,270 recommended. Uh, item 42, public grounds. $4,385 is the re requested and recommended amount. Looks like we're still good. Line 43 highway maintenance, total highway maintenance. $315,672 requested, $315,672 recommended. Item 44, general highway expense, $18,300 requested and the same amount has been recommended. Item 45, snow and ice removal. $100,000 is the requested and $125,000 is the recommended amount. Item 46, total con is contract services, total contract services. $63,700 requested, $63,700 recommended. Item 47, other highway accounts. $21,000 requested, $21,000 recommended. Item 48, building expense, $16,250 requested, $16,250 re recommended. Total Highway Department, $990,692 requested, $1,015,692 recommended. Looks like we're still okay. Protection of persons and property. <coughs> Item 50, Animal Inspector. Total animal inspection, I'm sorry, animal inspection, total animal inspection, $5,877 requested, $5,877 recommended. Item 51, emergency management, $4,900 requested, $4,900 recommended. Item 51.5, traffic control, $15,000 is the requested and the recommended amount. Item 52, dog officer, total dog officer, $14,629 requested, $14,629 recommended. Line 53, Fire Department. 
$403,854 requested, $403,854 recommended. Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. Is someone here to address that? Or, I see the chief. The fire department requesting extra funds for Jane Hinkley. She's our person in charge now. She's retiring in January 1st. So we're going to replace her. She volunteers a lot of her hours. And unfortunately, we don't expect to find someone that can volunteer. She's retiring in our position. So she's retiring. My opinion is that you want to tell the nation to the full-time staff of the fire department when they have a lot of downtime. They can take over a lot of their duties and take them down. Yes, they were hired to be fire department. Okay. Okay. Let's stay on the civil tone. The question is asked and answered. Any more discussion on that line? Item 54, Forest Fire Control, $1,800 requested, $1,800 recommended. Item 56, Board of Health, total Board of Health, $101,213 requested, $101,213 recommended. Item 56.5, Water District, total Water District, $14,000 requested and $14,000 is the recommended number. Line item 57, Police. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I'm sorry. Please. Oh, could you state your name, please? Jacqueline Ford here. Okay. I'm wondering what the Water District means to me. I had to have my well tested, the well water, and when I spoke to Town Hall, I was on my own. So when you're talking about Water District and testing, what's the Water District? So what I can tell you is from firsthand experience, when we closed the landfill, part of the issue of the landfill closure was contaminated wells around the landfill, and we had to establish a public water supply to support those homes. In the last few years, the Water District, the area covered by it has expanded to include a few more homes that were affected by salt contamination, and the Water District budget is, the entire town is not serviced by public water, but as a requirement of our agreement with the state back in 93 and as of today, we do have a Water District for the homes serviced by public water, and this is the cost of running that district. Thank you. You are welcome. Are you guys good with that? Great. Total police, so we'll do total police. $1,494,967 requested, $1,494,967 recommended. Other police accounts, item 58, total of line 58, $1,823 requested, $1,823 recommended. Total police, $1,496,790 requested, $1,496,790 recommended. Line 59. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Jacqueline Fournier again. Sure. The fire department, I'm hearing a lot of mentioning of additions to the fire station or building a new one. Is that, it's not here. That wouldn't be in that number. These are the operational numbers. So anything that's related to construction additions, repairs to the buildings would be separate warrant questions, if any pertain. But as a rule, those type of questions for any department are not contained inside the operating budget. 58 we did, 59 we did. Police fire communications, $27,245 requested, $27,245 recommended. Total protection, $2,085,308 requested, $2,085,308 is the recommended number. Now on to line 69, schools. Regional school district, total regional school district. This number is not in your green sheets, as Carol let you know, but that number has been provided. And that number is $8,093,356. Local government, 
uh, local government debt, excuse me, line seven, total local government debt, $691,588 is the requested and it is also the recommended amount. The grand total, you'll see the, re the requested number being $15,959,639 with the total recommended number $15,829,566. Any questions? This will require a majority vote. It is on the annual operating budget. All those in favor of passing the budget? Are there any opposed? This looks unanimous. No, I'm sorry, one. It was majority. Prior year bills. To see if the town will vote to authorize the payment of any departmental bills of fiscal year 2022 or previous years and will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of money therefor or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, I move the town take no action on this item. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Advisory have a recommendation on no action? Advisory recommends no action. A no action article simply requires a majority vote. Any, is there any discussion? Mr. Moderator, uh, unlike most of us, I'm pleased to uh, inform the town that we have no prior year bills, unlike the rest of us. <laughs> that may be your only comment on the question. This would require a majority vote. All those in favor of no action? Are there any opposed? I would see that as unanimous. Question four. Fiscal 2024 spending limits for revolving funds. To see if the town will vote to authorize the following total expenditures for each of the following revolving funds pursuant to General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023 to be expended in accordance with the bylaws heretofore approved or take any other action relative thereto. The funds in question are Building Department Fund, 85,000, Cemetery Commission Fund, 30,000, Council on Aging Fund, 21,000, Library Fund, 3,000, Conservation Commission Fund, 25,000, Planning Board Fund, 10,000. Detail, <clears throat> under the paper, the Board of Health Fund, $20,000. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to authorize the following total expenditures for the following revolving funds with amounts not to exceed the listed amounts pursuant to General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half for the fiscal year 2024. Building Department Fund 85,000, Cemetery Commission Fund 30,000, Council on Aging Fund 21,000, Library Fund 3,000, Conservation Commission Fund 25,000, Planning Board Fund 10,000, or the Health Fund 20,000. We have a motion, we have a second. Does the Advisory Committee have a recommendation? The advisory recommends favorable action. Any discussion on the revolving fund question? One down front. Chaplain Thorner again about the conservation commission fund. Please explain that to me. I, what does that do? Are we buying a property to make it a nice park here, or what is that about? Good. It's actually for conservation commission. Build it in the name of the department. We have expenses that are temporary. We have to hire a contractor to inspect the piece of property. Something on that issue. It's money in and out. It doesn't cost you cash or anything. It's temporary holding to allow money to flow in and out. We're not buying anything. It's the same for This is not like we bought from Goat. No, it has nothing to do with All right, it. conservation. If you think of it as your whole budget, with your whole budget, okay, gotcha. temporarily. Thank you. Okay. So, the revolving fund article requires a majority vote. Is there any more discussion? Seeing, Robin, is that a question? Please have a question, because I've read a couple of times. Can you just explain a little bit how we look at the revolving fund, how these funds 
operate like they're already raising money, they're in a development account, in and out. So this is this is money that's outside of the operating budget. This is this allows the departments mentioned either to collect fees, whether they be bag fees, permit fees. So it, it allows the money to be collected, puts it in a holding place until the money is spent. So it's does it contribute to the operations of each of the departments? Yes, it does. But it is solely to collect receipts that come in as opposed to tax revenues that come in. It holds it until it's needed for expenditure. Okay? Anybody else? I got the nod of approval from the treasurer. Don't forget to go. There you go. All right. Seeing all the questions are taken care of, uh, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? All unanimous. Article 5, Enterprise Fund, Transfer Station. To see if the town will vote to appropriate a sum of money to fund the operations of the transfer station from the estimated income to be derived in fiscal year 2024 transfer station operations. The tax levy, a transfer from available funds, including the retained earnings of relevant enterprise fund, or from any combination of these methods or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to appropriate the following amounts for the transfer station. $34,740.67 for salaries, $64,194.54 for trash hauling and work contract, $1,650 for miscellaneous expenses, and that a total of $100,585.21 be raised from the transfer station enterprise fund receipts. So we've got a motion, we've got a second. Does the advisory committee have a recommendation? Advisory recommends favorable action. Is there any discussion on the question? Seeing no, well, I see a question. Peter. Yes, sir. Uh, solar money that comes from solar panels, is that going to offset the transfer station funds? No, this is strictly for hauling and recycling. Money coming in for solar field. My my understanding, um, and if you want to take this, Dick, please go ahead. There, no, if you did that, they'd be spending the money without your approval. All the money that we get rent from the solar field goes into general income, so that we can appropriate it for the next town meeting. Otherwise, it'd be a revolving fund, such slush fund situation, and you wouldn't want that here. No, I. Yeah, so, so the answer is that that money goes directly into the general fund and is not allocated for operation. It can actually be used for other departments. Okay? Not okay, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Um, without any other questions, this also requires a majority vote. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion carries. We are now on Article 6, Community Preservation. Community Preservation Action Committee. To see if the town will vote to appropriate or reserve from community preservation annual revenues in the amounts recommended by the Community Pre Preservation Committee for the committee administrative expenses, community preservation projects, and other expenses in fiscal, fiscal year 2024 with each item to be considered a separate appropriation or take any other action relative thereto. It should be pointed out there are, if you're looking at your warrant, there are two separate motions that will be entertained here after the CPA folks make a brief presentation. The first motion is to see if the town will vote to appropriate $63,300 from the Community Preservation Fund for the purchase of a 13.7 acre parcel at Zero Walnut Road for conservation purchases by the Minichog Land Trust or take any other action relative thereto. The second motion, a separate motion and a separate vote, would be to see if the town will vote to appropriate $45,000 from the Community Preservation Fund for the purchase of adaptive playground equipment at the Green Meadows School by the Hamden Wilbraham Regional School District or take any other action relative thereto. Motions or report? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I move that the town vote to appropriate $63,300 from the Community Preservation Fund for the purchase of a 13.7 acre parcel at Zero Walnut Road for conservation purposes 
by the Minnetonka Land Trust or take any other action relative thereto. We've got a motion, we've got a second. Does the advisory committee have a recommendation to this motion? The advisory recommends their full action. Okay, is there any discussion? Anything you want to say? Let me just advise town meeting that the Community Preservation Fund, as of last month, we had $511,340. These two articles tonight combined are $108,300. So there's adequate funds. As most people are aware, the CPA funds have already been raised and appropriated. This money is already in the bank, if you will. Any discussion on the question? John Matthews. Yeah. What are you going to use the land for? Probably for hiking, Your Honor. This parcel abuts the existing Minnetonka land parcel. And it comes down to the river. And it's right at the end of Walnut Road, Walnut Street. So it's a contiguous piece of property that, as I say, fronts the river as well. It's valued at $72,200, right? What we're doing is we're taking this land off of our tax rolls now. So I'll grant you that we're going to lose $1,218 a year. Maybe not much. We just spent a ton of money, $8 million or whatever, for our budget. If we keep doing this, because if I'm correct, community preservation, the focus is on the majority of the money goes to buying land for open space. The second thing, I believe, is for what we're going to vote on the second item, I believe, okay? And the third thing would be for low-income housing. And correct me if I'm wrong. Right, and actually there's a fourth category that was added in, which is recreation. Okay. So this parcel of land... Hold on, Connie. Let him finish. Let him finish, Connie. Please go. Okay. So this parcel of land, I agree, it does abut other Minjog land trust land already. At the end of, I'm going to say, Hickory Lane, there's a path there. The land, this land is... It's in national heritage all over it. So I'm not sure how we can do this, whatever, if you're going to make a walking trail. I don't think you could put a parking lot there. And also the elevation is... Yeah, it's steep. I mean, it's steep. So is it the best use of the community preservation land? That's the big question I have. The other one is, I'm not big on buying land, because what it does is it puts more emphasis on the taxpayers, because we have budgets that keep going up. We keep taking land off of the tax rolls. That's my big problem. Fair enough. Hold on one sec before you go. Gary, Connie, you started to say something. Please come through the moderator. Yes. Besides those uses, it's also used for historic preservation. The town has used that in the past, and it's our townhouse in great repair. And it's eligible to use those funds. We can do quite a bit with that money for historic preservation, and we've already done so. Okay. And Gary, Gary, why not? Just a question. Did we get an appraisal? The land trust did. Is somebody here from the land trust? Hi. I'm here from the representative of the land trust. We did get an assessment, and the town, through the town moderator, decided that we could use the assessment instead of the appraisal for the land. If we were to do an appraisal, we would spend an extra amount of money, and the appraisal would come out higher than the assessment. All right. So for formulatic purposes, the moderator didn't have anything to do with that. I don't get to play in that sandbox. So whatever. So there was apparently an appraisal done with the value. But Gary, please, you had a follow-up, so go ahead. Yeah, if I could follow up. 
usually assess value to the moderator through town. Um, I question whether or not anybody has really walked that land as an appraiser. Um, because as John has indicated, if anybody has, it's great for hiking, wonderful for hiking. But in terms of value other than the hiking, in fact, we've got endangered species issues there. I believe that value of that land would be substantially less than what we're going to pay for. Well, let me do this before you answer. Let me just reiterate. Um, the moderator is impartial, so the moderator had nothing to do with any appraisal of the land, the value of it. Like I said, I don't get to play in that sandbox. So as long as we're good there, Doug, do you want to follow up on that, or are you good? Uh, well, just acknowledge that you know, that that issue of development versus you know preservation conservation comes up you know every time a piece of private a piece of property comes available. Uh, and I know the land trust does not bring, uh, they don't attempt to purchase each, each piece of property that is brought to their attention, they're selective in terms of which properties they bring to uh, the town meeting. Uh, and one of those, those items that they, they focus on is, uh, you know, the, the heritage aspect of it, but also how it fits into the overall scheme uh, that the town has. And if you, if you look at the map, I mean, the, the Minotaur parcel good sized piece of land these days. This is immediately contiguous to it. This will expand that uh, without having any significant impact on any of the, the neighboring properties. Essentially, it will keep things the way it is. Um, and I think there's a value to that. You know, I, I understand taking and developing a property off of the tax rolls. Uh, this expenditure is one that I believe is worthwhile in the long run. Uh, hold on, before you do. Seth? Yes. By all means. Um, so, when you look at this parcel of property, um, and there are $7, $72,000, one of the issues was that this piece of land has such a sea grade, and um, the way that the land accesses that cul de sac there at the end of Walnut Road, the owner of the property would have to ask for a right away from the neighboring property to have a driveway going to that section. So we were able to negotiate a discount for that land. One more, Gary. Okay, sorry. Okay, but it's four. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm not opposed in, in, in theory to the, the acquisition of the parcel. What I believe, though, is the value that we're going to pay for is, is beyond what the parcel is worth. You can argue um, hooking up with the, the rest of the Minichog uh, land that we already own, but in terms of dollars and cents, um, my company years ago looked at that for the owner, and it was decided that it was not building, and that there were you know severe restrictions because of grade and because of access. <coughs> for that reason, it sat there, and the seventy-three thousand dollar assessment on it was just. Uh, a little bit way beyond what that, that parcel would work. All right, I'm going to exercise moderate. Oh, John. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to exercise moderator prerogative and move this question. Um, I have a question wait, about oh, Hold on. Now that you said that, like, that got weird. There's two. Um, all right. We'll take. All right. So let's take. We'll take two more. I, it's, let's try and be fair here. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yep. This is Sternberg, 15 Mountain View Drive. I didn't know if you were going to address. Uh, Section B about the forty-five thousand. That's now. Okay, so that would be yes. motion. Okay, thank you. I'm being pointed to another question. Yes. So my name is Chris Bowman. I'm from Stony Hill. So if you buy this land, bought by the taxpayer, your money, how do you communicate to the taxpayer that it's available for them for their use? Well, the woman sitting right next to you is the person that can answer that because she's with the land trust. Well, yeah, I've been here for ten years. And I'm not aware of these properties you're talking about. Uh, and they're useful. Uh, the Minnesota Land Trust does have a website, minnesotalandtrust.org, where we post all of our properties. Um, we do have signs around at the outposts of all of our properties. Uh, there are town maps that are available which we would adjust, uh, not town maps, I'm sorry. Uh, trail maps that we would adjust to include this portion of property within the Minnesota Land Trust um, conservation area. Uh, and there's usually 
signs and trailblazers. So is there a safe link? Is that from the town site? Um, we are linked to the town site currently, but um, if you look up any sign, we have press the Google or go to the town site, that's our own journal right there. We're actually on the they suggest in the future that we the Point noted, um, and the powers that be to my right are the IT people, or a part of the IT consortium. That's um, it. Are, are we good here, John? I just have to add one more thing. The town already owns more than 450 acres. Of that, almost 400 of it is um, not, I'm going to say, there's no town building on okay? So, for those people that don't know, we already own quite a bit of land. All right, so at this stage, we're gonna move the question. To make this purchase at the number prescribed requires a majority vote. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion carries. On to motion number two. Just wondering, I move that the town vote to appropriate $45,000 in the preservation fund for the purchase of adaptive playground equipment at the Green Meadows School by the Hampton Wilbraham Regional School District or to take any other action relative thereto. Second, we have a second. Second. Yes. We do have a second. There's a motion to second. Does the advisory committee have a recommendation? The advisory recommends favorable action. Anything you want to say? Uh, only unless there's any questions. I think it's really self-explanatory. Let's go. Uh, are there any questions? I see one, please. I see another one. one. Hold on, Connie. Yes, okay. Yep. This is to her team on the drive. Um, I'm interested in some details on uh, this project. Um, what, what equipment is going to be added in? There are two playgrounds at Green Meadows, and one is the Early Childhood Ed Playground. That's the PKK, and then the other one is from first grade top. So I'm curious as to um, what what's going to be added. Well, it's a um, it's a it's a twenty well a capacity for twenty children, and it's a, a glider seat. It's essentially a, a low slung platform uh, with a ramp which goes up to it. And a couple of mold-in seats, so so kids with limited mobility are able to get onto the platform and get, you know, possibly into the seats if they want to. Uh, and the plan, I believe, I have the school committee. The plan is to put it adjacent to the existing playground. And by that, do you mean um, the one at the PKK or the one off the back? The one off the back. Okay, thank you. I thought I saw another question, Connie. Please, go ahead. Can I ask the advisory committee, please, if this is the entire price for this, or is this Hampton's share? No, this, this is the entire price. As a matter of fact, this is a couple thousand dollars more than the quoted installation figure. The, the quote was from, I believe, January or February. Um, but it is an all-in figure, and it, this is uh, entirely Hamden money in Fort Green Meadows. There's a, the school district has made a comparable request to the Wilbraham Community Preservation Committee for a piece of equipment at one of their elementary schools as well. Okay, so each town is paying for their own yep. school. Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, this will require a majority vote as well. All in favor? Any opposed? The motion carries. We are now on Article 7, Conservation Fund. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from unappropriated available funds a sum of money for the Conservation Fund, said fund to be used for the purpose of acquiring available land for the town of Hamden for conservation purposes, if said purchase is voted upon and approved at the annual or special town meeting prior to such purchase or take any other action relative thereto. Do you understand? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to raise appropriate $1,000 for the conservation fund, said fund to be used for the purpose of acquiring available land 
for the town for conservation purposes if said purchase is voted and approved at an annual town or special town meeting prior to said purchase. Second. We've got a motion, we've got a second. Advisory have a recommendation? Advisory recommends favorable action. Is there any discussion on the question? This is, this is the annual question every year where we decide whether or not to put $1,000 into a side fund for the eventual potential, potential I am, purchase of conservation land. Um, I do, I see two. Please, first, go ahead. We just voted on 63000 to go for conservation with the prior article, and I wonder if this is a redundant, I mean, conservation fund, conservation fund, and to the lady who's involved with that, I admire what you're trying to do, but maybe love it. No, if it's a piece of garbage land, and why would you pay somebody's right here to offer them 10000 and thank you. You're welcome. It is, it is a separate issue, I know. So, but it's okay. We were allowed to read the yes. point, we're good. Um, but that, that should end that. Um, I did see a question over here. Before I go to Peter, hold on. Uh, Rita. How much money is in it? Um, did the advisory committee have the number? 20. There's currently $21,800 in the con conservation trust. Okay. And uh, Peter. Are we appropriating or transferring? It'll be raised appropriate. I, the warrant, I think, left the option open, but the it motion. Four. Um, but the motion was to raise an appropriate, if I'm not mistaken. So yep. So we're going off of the motion, not off the warrant question. The motion was raised appropriate. Are we okay? That said, this is a majority vote. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Article 8, Chapter 90, State Highway. To see if the town will vote to accept a sum of money from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in accordance with Chapter 90, Section 34 of the Massachusetts General Laws and the Transportation Department's Chapter 90 Guidelines and be allowed to borrow in anticipation of reimbursement or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, will the town accept $251,000? from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts under the General Laws, Chapter 90, Section 34, and be allowed to borrow in anticipation of 100% reimbursement. Second. second. We have a second. So we do have a motion, we have a second. The Advisory Committee, do you have a recommendation? Advisory recommends favorable action. Any discussion? This is our annual question where, this, where we accept the state offering of money, tax revenue, whatever you'd like to refer to it as, and also, we are allowed to borrow in anticipation of that money coming in. Any questions? Okay, this requires a two-thirds vote, simply because borrowing may be involved. So again, it's two-thirds vote. All those in favor of the question? Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 9, Library State Aid. To see if the town to see, to see if the town will vote that in fiscal year 2024, if state aid for the Hampton Library is received, this money will be made available to the library trustees for use at their, at their discretion or take any other action relative thereto. And does the town vote that in fiscal year 2024, if state aid is received for the Hampton Public Library, this money may be made available to library trustees for use at their discretion? We've got a motion, we have a second. Advisory, have a recommendation? Advisory recommends favorable action. Is there any discussion to be had? Okay, this does not require, this requires only a majority vote. There's no borrowing involved. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. We're on to Article 10, tree stump removal. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate or transfer from unappropriated available funds a sum of money to reimburse the Minichog Land Trust for grinding stumps that remained after the previously approved removal of dead or dying trees at the South Road entrance to the Minichog Mountain Conservation Land or take any other action relative thereto. We have somebody to make the motion? Uh, I 
Um, I moved to see the town to vote to remove the property for transfer from unappropriated bill funds, a sum of money. No. Do you reimburse the Minnetonka Land Trust for grabbing stuff that remains? No. All right, hold on, hold on. No, no, relax, it's okay. Look You're taking a shot here, we're gonna be all right. The motion cannot be two parts. So it's either raise and appropriate or transfer. Um, my understanding is it's raise and appropriate. So Dick, if you're gonna give her a hand, that's okay? Thank you. I got it now. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $3,200 to fund removal of troop stunts at South Road entrance to the Minnesota County Conservation Land. Second. There you go, you got it. Look, at all you gotta do is keep trying. We're here with you. Um, so, we've got a motion. I know I heard a second. Advisor. Advisor recommends favorable action. Is there any discussion? Town members. Go ahead. No, honestly. Um, what did we do last, um, last fall? Last fall. So, yeah. so last fall, there was a question on the warrant about paying for removal of trees. And at the time that was done, the tree work was already done, so we, we passed the money to reimburse for the tree expense. The same night, they did, the land trust folks did make a request for the stump grinding money, and we, we refused, saying that since that work had not been done yet, we were not going to authorize that money until we were presented with a question. So this is the follow-up to that. Um, did this come in two parts um, because to get around not having to go out to No, work. no, no. no it, and John, just because it's clear, it's important for the vote. Um, it, it came in two parts simply because they had done the tree work ahead of time, but we felt that the amount being requested, the work had been done, it was verifiable, it was well within parameter. So it wasn't split up any other reason except this work had not been done the night of special town meeting, and we were not going to authorize funds to be expended until they had a, um, a bid and set to do the work. We weren't going to approve it ahead of time. Okay. Go. Oh, your question. Um, any more discussion? Yes, sir. Yeah, Larry Blake here. Um, I love that area, but I'm wondering, it's not going to be developed. What would happen if it's being stopped? Um, Mother Nature. <laughs> yeah. They would. They would. The stuff that misses us has a. We have volunteers that help to pay that fee. Mm -hmm. So if the stumps are there, they can't go and pay. Uh, and because all of the invasive properties were there, everything was growing up and over the stone wall, there were trees that were falling down into the road. So, um, she meant to clear that and to keep it so that the trees wouldn't grow and that food would have that growth. So now we're going to be showing it. Okay. Um, Peter's question is answered. John, anybody else have a question in regard to this? Okay, this again requires a majority vote of the $3,200. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion carries. We are on to Article 11, Fire Truck Renovation. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, borrow, or transfer from unappropriated available funds a sum of money to recondition fire engine number two, a 2002 international fire truck, or take any other action relative thereto. Do we have a motion? Moderator, I make a motion. I move to the town vote for raise and appropriate $10,000 to our department for renovation of the fire engine. Second. We've got a motion, we've got a second. Advisory? Advisory recommends favorable action. Is there any discussion on the question? I am not seeing any, so we'll go right to the vote. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? Well, Ed, you had it easiest of everybody so far. <laughs> Article 12, funding to maintain the town's defibrillators. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from unappropriated available funds a sum of money to maintain the town's 12 defibrillators or take any other action relative thereto. Yeah. 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 
Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to raise an appropriate $5,820 for required maintenance on the town's 12 defibrillators. Second. Thank you. It took you some effort to get that. <laughs> Remember, Vinny, with the emergency, you may need it. You're going to need that defibrillator. Um, we've got a motion. I'm kidding aside. We got a motion. We have a second? Second. I did hear it. Advisory? Advisory recommends favorable action. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Article 13, local match for a grant for the fire department forestry truck, for a fire department forestry truck. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate or transfer from unappropriated available funds a sum of money as to the local match for a grant from the Federal Emergency Management Agency to purchase a new forestry truck or take any other action relative thereto. Second, Enid. Was there an article of law? Um, wait a minute. Yeah, the defibrillators. That was the defibrillators. So, no, we, we did defibrillators, we're on the match for your truck. One of us is slowing down, it could well be me, but you, you take a shot. Come on, I made a motion to, I move that the town vote to raise the appropriate $10,950.39 to provide a local match for human grant for this fire department's 1953 forestry. Second. We've got a motion. We've got a second. Um, advisory. Advisory recommends favorable action. Is there any discussion? Any? I'm not seeing. Oh, I'm can, sorry. Can you indulge me in a tongue in cheek comment? Does the historical commission have a problem with retiring the 70 year old fire forest instructor? <laughs> <laughs> ah! precious. <laughs> 70 years old, and I you should have taken better care of it than laughed the longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you look at what don't start this. Go, Lil, you're up. Perhaps we could restore it and use it for parades. <laughs> <laughs> that has been done in the past, and you may see it again. So, um, but again, there's um, straight to the point though. There's no more question. I'm sorry, there is. Do you have the fire chief explain the grant? Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Um, we've got a request from the board of selectmen for the fire chief to explain the grant. And it might be because you've done something good, I hope. Uh, no, I thank you, selectmen. Um, so, our, the grant we were awarded to replace our rush truck that we have now is for $230,000. Our deputy chief wrote the grant. We have a great um, truck team that's been working hard. Building a new truck, um, which will be placing the port soon. But for two hundred thirty thousand dollars, what the grant our cost at town was was ten thousand nine hundred fifty three dollars, um, and it will be a, a you know off road piece of equipment that will probably be up to date and stuff. <laughs> Okay, so you've got an explanation. Now, are there, in addition to, any other questions? I do see a question down front. I'd like to know how often we use the forestry the fire truck, and what's the difference between that and a regular, it's a four-wheel drive thing, or? Well, it's got off-road capability, but I'm gonna let the, uh, the guy above my pay grade tell you that. Yeah, so it's built with uh, bigger tires, higher off the ground, so, you know, we don't get um, I'm so you're going to stop forest fires? Yeah, it will be um, just for forest fires, but we're building it so it can be a backup to the water hole. Water hole is, you know, um, water supply, so if, if there was a structure fire, we need water for something else, and maybe the truck will not be enough to get a truck that we have um, for that is unreliable or out of town. Or we need a second on um, water supply to use this one to set that up. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. Hi, Judge Jackson. I just got a question. If you get a new truck, you're going to be able to tow the fire trucks off Main Street? <laughs> 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 That's a smart question. Let me tell you, if you can't have fun, what's the point? All right. Without any additional question or comment, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? 
Motion carries. We are now on Article 14, new dump truck for the Highway Department. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, borrow, or transfer from unappropriated available funds a sum of money to purchase a new dump truck with a plow or take any other action relative thereto. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $222,465 for the highway department to replace the 1993 Mack dump truck. So we've got a motion that has been made this afternoon. Advisory recommendation. Advisory recommends favorable action. Does any discussion, questions, you want to say anything about the truck? There you go. Uh, we're going to the highway department wants to replace a 1993 back dump truck that has 118,277 miles on it. Over the last few years, we've spent $15,000 in, in repairs on it. Uh, it's in, in the, the truck is a, it would be a standard Mack dump truck, stainless steel body and a plow. Uh, we're going to attempt to put it on the state auction and probably receive twelve to fifteen thousand dollars for this one. Okay. See any no questions, no comment, any additional seeing none, this is a majority vote. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Article fifteen. Funding for the master plan to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds a sum of money to provide additional funding for use by the master plan committee to update the Hamden master plan or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town raise and appropriate $57,500 to the planning board for the purpose of updating the town master plan. Second. The motion has been made and second to raise appropriate raise and appropriate. Does the advisory have a recommendation? Advisory recommends favorable action. Does any, any question, discussion, the master plan folks want to make a bit of a report? Um I'm sorry, the Alamont again? Fifty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. They didn't give it to me for the for my record, so thank you. You got it? Okay, thanks. Do you folks have any kind of a anything you want to say? Well, I would say that we've already received a grant of seventy-five thousand dollars. So this is the additional funds that we will use to engage a consultant to help us do the development of the town master plan. The current plan is 40 years old and really not useful for the type of work that the planning board and other Members of town committees might want to look to with some guidance. We're looking forward to having something that's current, and we believe we've got the consulting firm that is well regarded in the new firm and also sought out references for those firms. So I think we found the right match for our units. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Mr. Patel. Yeah. I would encourage you to vote against this. Um, originally, they got a grant for $75,000 for the master plan, and the, uh, with all the money, the government money that's been flowing down, all the consultants are jacking their prices way up. Despite the grandiose title of a master plan, the master plan is basically a zoning and land use guideline, and it has value for a town that has immature zoning, uh, where they haven't established where the districts are yet. Uh, Hammond is not in that situation. Um, and basically, it, uh, maybe our zoning needs a little tweaking in what the rules are, but we don't need an overall plan at this point. Um, in uh, 35 years that I've gone to town government, nobody has ever said to me, I don't know the answer to that, let me look at the master plan and see what they recommend. Mm -hmm. There's a reason we, it hasn't been pulled out of the door because it is not a very useful document. It was bad enough when we were talking about spending grant money, which is our money, but to put this kind of money on the tax rate for a document that no one's ever gonna use for any legitimate purpose makes no sense to me. Thank you. Phil Schneider. 
just like uh, Phil Snyder and Raymond Drive, I'd just like to point out that we've already spent, I believe it was three hundred seventy thousand dollars above what we gave for the budget. So I mean, this would make it four and a quarter, and we still got money to go. So no, just just a little caution for the wind. I see. Yes, I hear Jason way in the back. Jason, what's so uh, many work also at 239 in the road. I'm not sure where uh, the previous speaker got his uh, information as far as master plans not being needed for the towns that don't have master plans not being useful for towns that are immature and selling. Uh, I'm not mistaken, the state recommended updating the master plan every five to ten years. Jason. Hold one second. Can everybody hear him okay? No. 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 Jason, could you just come up and if you're, yeah. uh, your point seems to be important, so. Sorry about that, folks. Any better? Yeah. I'm not sure where the previous speaker got his information. The state recommends updating the master plan every five to ten years. It is not something that's needed for immature uh, zoning towns. It's also $132,000 is $7,000 more than the town of Ludlow spent in 2010 to update their master plan. So to say that consultants are jacking their price is a complete lie. That is... That is careful what, of the choice of words, please. Thank you. That is what it costs to put the effort into this sort of uh, proposal. They have 24 Zoom calls with a consultant. They've got three all day, uh, all day working sessions that they're planning to have for the whole town. And they have an additional six planning board meetings plus drafting uh, this document. Um, if, if folks think that that level of effort is not commensurate with $132,000, I'm not sure where you get consultants that do work for less than that. Fair enough. Again, just a caution. We all have opinions. We also, and, then, and the vast majority of us, I'm sure, have substantial information behind it. So let's be aware of each other, okay? Um, and Jason has always been a rock solid guy, so just go from there. Yes, sir. My question is if we spend this money, what is it going to do for us? What's the return on investment? I can speak to that. There's a new planning number this year. As we began looking at certain topic areas in the town, I knew there was a master plan that was required. It is required by state law that towns have a master plan. So I looked for that, and it's a difficult to find, and it's 40 years old. So some of the relevant topics that we were talking about would have been very helpful to have current community views, which is really a lot of what it's about. The master plan is built on input from the community, so we hope to be able to use it as a reference point whenever we come up with topics that are important, of course they all are, but we would have been very helpful in some of our deliberations to have something that's current that would have said in the last five to ten years, this is the way the town thought about this. This was the consensus. And to be honest, you know, and the assumptions built into the plan are critical as well. The existing plan predicted the town would have 7,000 people by now. Right? We're under 5,000. So we need to have something that's current, a reference point, so we can make better decisions. I think it's worth the investment. $132,000 spread over 10 or 15 years. Isn't that a bad return on your investment, right? So I think it's worth spending 10 or so thousand dollars a year to get something that's reliable, that's a tool for your planning board or other members. Can I get one example of what can we do? <coughs> what specifically yeah, I mean, can we do? Well, Jason has experience. I'll let him talk. Yeah, let's give one example. Okay, Jason. Okay. So, one thing, just to think back on, on the hot topics over the past couple of years, the current master plan doesn't address solar, doesn't address self storage units. The current map, the master plan is supposed to take the community's opinion on how the town is supposed to be developed. So there was a lot of opinion around a few projects that got proposed, and the planning board had nothing to go by except for the folks that showed up to the planning board here, or the planning board hearings. So having a plan that actually gets community input and to find out what the town wants to see in certain areas. 
because that's basically what the master plan is. We haven't had an update for what the town wants to see in certain areas since 1982. So that's really the reasons to get just to get comments. All right, let's, uh, Dick, your hand was up first, and I've got you. I, I will point out that the, uh, I'm sorry, the speaker over here said we should advertise this over 15, 20 years for the $130,000, and Jason said that we should be updating this every five years, I think is what you said in the state. Five to ten. Five to ten years, so there's a little discrepancy on how long this, this investment would be have any value. Fair point. Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks for that, Island Circle. Um, talk about the solar panel, as you can see, why the town did vote and put a bylaw in with regards to solar panels, did they not? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if we can do that as a town on an individual basis, why can't we do it on anything else? The town has shrunk in population in 40 years. Why do we need a newer plan? If anything, maybe we should go back to the plan before. <laughs> All right, I'm seeing a few. Okay, let's, um, young lady, up front, please. The gentleman that was most knowledgeable about the need for a uh, master plan, sir, what is your expertise? Because if you were very verbose about what it was going to do for us, I have lived here approximately 18 years, and I have come to understand that we want to keep our town a little town, which is nice. We're not we're not looking to have industry come in. If we're talking about that, then that deserves a special meeting. So what do you do, sir? What do you have? What do I do? I was previously a consultant. The reason I know about master plan is I served as the chairman of the master plan committee in Lumbo. I lived in okay. Lumbo 30, 30 years ago. Okay. Okay. Because so that's I the only reason I have any any experience with master plan is going through the process of stuff. <laughs> It's not something a it's not something a planning board can take on. It really it was a two year process with a fifteen person committee. It's not something that a volunteer board can take on without help from a from a professional. Okay. Um, let's let's grab one more. Um, let Gary. I, um, I guess my concern and more of a question for the planning board is that. Anybody who's been following the state and what they're doing with zoning and regulations on the state level, does this master plan then play into the fact that the state's going to be able to utilize it to force different changes in the town and hand which we may not want? Where they will take that master plan put together by consultants who obviously have state backing and knowledge of what the state wants when it comes to master plan. I'm just very concerned that maybe we do need an update, but I would hope that there's enough people in this community that can do that kind of plan without spending that kind of money bringing in outside consultants. Thad, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the question. I think we've, we've had enough debate on it. This, wait a minute. You know what, I'm actually seeing a different hand. Young lady with the black and purple. I just have one question. The master plan proposing the master plan is proposing $132,000 roughly. This is just to bring it current. And we're recommending it being updated every five to ten years. What would it cost to update it regularly after the this? I was on I was still in London when they updated. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm just kind of curious. If you're going to spend $132,000 to update this existing plan, what would it cost to update this? And I kind of agree it's 40 years old, but from there, if you need to, to continually update every five to ten years, what is the expense from there? Yeah, I do understand the question. I'm not sure the answer, but that's actually the point that Mr. Patello made. Um, I really want to move this, but conversely, we're getting a lot of questions. Robin, hold on. Um, let's take, we'll take three more, right? Because it's, there are different hands coming up. Let's, Robin, go. All right, Robin, 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 I just want to say that I remember that master plan. Uh, yeah, I was part of the committee who developed it, and I totally agree with Gary that I think there's enough people in town that to be committed um, with, uh, you know, help, how you work for, with, 
And that was very effective in hundreds of thousands of people that had an update in regards to a new master plan. I agree with you that we probably could do it without it. Okay, before we go to Jen, we're going to go to Cliff. I can appreciate that the state says we should upgrade every five years. This budget here that we voted on earlier is full of things that the state is making us pay for. Not suggesting we pay for them, making us pay for them. They're suggesting we do this. I'm not in the idea of funding suggestions. Thank you, Cliff. And this will be the last one. Do you have it, John? Being previously on the planning board, uh, in reviewing the master plan previously, okay, one of the things it does is it makes recommendations to the town. Those recommendations would then be voted on at town meeting, okay? So it's going to be, you're going to spend some money up front, with a master plan, but eventually those suggestions that come from the master plan would have to be voted on at this meeting or at a fall meeting. So the town would still have a say as to how the money is spent. So going back to the question as to people um, Back in 83, 84, when they did the master plan or released it, there was more community involvement. Um, one of the things that the consultants are looking for is community involvement. I'm not sure that you would still get the level of community involvement that you did back in the 80s. Fair enough. All right, we're going to move the question now. So we are at the point where it's time to vote. Now this requires a majority vote. I want to make a motion that we table this for another time. There's too much to say. Is it, no. You're going to do that by this vote. It's a simple up or down vote. It doesn't mean it can't be discussed again. So if it's a no vote, right. it's done if, for, the, for this amount of money. If it's a yes vote, it goes. That, so really you're doing, as far as, in my opinion, as far as tabling it, you have the option to defeat it or pass it. Um, so let's, so we should look at the, take the vote now. All those in favor? And all those opposed? The motion is defeated. Article 16, we have a citizen's petition. Uh, before, before the, uh, we take the motion, before I read the warrant question, let me read the one question first, and then I just want to say something, and we'll go from there. This, this is a citizen's petition again. To see if the town will vote pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 5F, to create a, a receipts reserve for ambulance fund to defray the cost, including maturing debt and interest of acquiring, establishing, maintaining, purchasing, hiring, and operating ambulance services, or take any other action relative thereto. Let me just say, the question itself is only as to whether or not the community wishes to allow an accounting procedure to be introduced in that if at some point in the future, ambulance service is provided directly by the town and billed for, then those funds will have a place to go. So it's, it's, it's not a revolving fund, it's treated differently. But in essence, to make it simple, its behavior is roughly the same. I know there's going to be a, a, a motion and a bit of a presentation about this. I think there may be even a contrary position. In as much as those discussions are really outside the total framework of the question, I'm going to allow it in some latitude in the interest that somebody's vote may be affected by what they hear. But keeping in mind, this is only about establishing an accounting procedure. Um, that said, we'll now entertain the motion. James Smith, Glendale Road. Can everybody hear me or should I use a microphone? Yeah, no, I microphone? Yeah. 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 Okay, my name is James Smith. I live on Glendale Road in Hamden. 
Um, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote pursuant to the provisions of MGL Chapter 40, Section 5F, to create a receipts reserved for ambulance fund to defray the cost, including maturing debt and interest, of acquiring, establishing, maintaining, purchasing, hiring, and operating ambulance services. Motion, we have a second. We have a second. Does the advisory committee have a recommendation? The advisory committee recommends negative action. Negative. The advisory committee recommended negative action. Um, Jim, you have something you want to say? Sure. Uh, Mr. Moderator and for the town clerk, for the record, I used the wording on the article and not the wording on the white paper. About eight months ago, I volunteered and was appointed to the ambulance um, oversight committee. And upon accepting that nomination, I decided to delve into ambulance service, both um, statewide and as it's uh, provided in Hamden. And Hamden currently has a contract with a private provider, Action Ambulance, uh, to provide 24 7 ambulance, uh, advanced life support ambulance service with a single ambulance housed in Hamden. Sounds good, right? So, why would we want to supplement that with ambulance transport? from our fire department. Well, I quickly learned that there are multiple occasions each month when Action Ambulance is serving a Hamden resident or is required by state law serving a resident of another town. And that there's another ambulance dispatch that occurs. Here's an example of the above. About two months ago, an elderly person fell and was injured at a business on Main Street. Our fire department responders were there in just a couple of minutes. But that person, but the action ambulance was out on a service call with another resident. So that person had to wait in, in pain for approximately 15 more minutes for an ambulance to come from another town in their mutual aid. Imagine if that was a life threatening situation. There are also occasions when multiple ambulances are needed at the same time. For example, uh, that well published accident uh, that was down here on Main Street last February where they had dispatch ambulances from multiple towns. <coughs> the Hamden Fire Department has an ambulance that was purchased in May 2020 with donated funds. The purchase was approved by the Board of Selectmen as reflected in their minutes of May 11, 2020. A few months later, the ambulance was inspected and certified. That was also approved by the Board of Selectmen as reflected their minutes on, on August 31, 2020. Yet the fire department ambulance sits unused. That is the impetus for this article. The article was written by me. It was I obtained the 10 required signatures to get it on town meeting. I'm passionate about this because we can provide better service, supplemental service. This is not this is not to take away from what we're currently getting. If this article is approved, as the moderator mentioned, it does not automatically start fire department ambulance service. That would be a decision of the Board of Selectmen and town meeting to provide the appropriate budget. Some logistics. To keep it simple and to control costs, the Board of Selectmen could allow the fire department to provide ambulance transport services limited to Monday to Friday, first shift, when we have responders in the fire station uh, ready and able to go, and they do respond when there are situations to come up. Hard to flip paper. The microphone works. I'm trying to keep this short, folks, but there's a lot of pieces to it. A little bit on the finances. Average municipal basic life support ambulance transport billing in our part of the state is $2,000 per transport. The cost of the fire department to provide that service will be approximately two callback firefighters, $20 an hour for two hours, that's $80. Replenishment of supplies, like bandages, oxygen masks, etc., maybe $100, maybe a little more. Uh, factor in ambulance mileage, I use $2 a, a, a mile, that's three times the standard IRS rate for cars. So, uh, 30 mile round trip, that's gonna be about $60, so about $250 for us to provide that service. I brought this matter up in public meetings and at the recent advisory committee hearing uh, a few weeks ago. 
There are several concerns that were addressed, and if you could just bear with me for a couple more minutes, I'm gonna address those concerns and let people express their, their thoughts. Concern one, if the fire department does transports, that will negatively impact our contract with action ambulance and possibly reduce any year-end rebates. That is not going to happen. Action ambulance will always be the first ambulance dispatched. The only time ambulance will be allowed to be dispatched is when action ambulance is not available and the backup ambulance is not available. Number two, when we need a second ambulance, we can just call for another ambulance that are mutual aid. Reference back to my issue the other day, about a couple months ago, where that person fell and had to wait in agony. Another one, our fire department personnel are only capable of basic life support transport. That is correct, but all certified ambulances are capable of an ambulance of advanced life support transport. The difference is the personnel and medications. As is frequently done, even at times with action ambulance, the patient is picked up by basic life support and transport is started. And then there is an intercept with a paramedic that has the medications and the necessary certificates and knowledge to provide ALS support. Then that ambulance becomes an advanced life support ambulance. The ambulance will be opening the door to the fire department becoming a full-time ambulance service. Doing that would require town meeting vote to establish a budget for that and would require approval by the board of selectmen. Keep in mind that our Monday to Friday daytime firefighter Larry, services. Point of order. Yes, sir. The motion is whether we should create an account. Correct. The speaker is talking about things way down the road. That's not the case. I'm addressing issues that have been brought up previously at hearings and other meetings. Hold on one second. So I did say that I would grant some latitude because it may have a bearing on how some folks will vote, but we do need to step it up. Okay, okay. I, have, I have one more page. Just do one more. Jim, just do one more example. Okay. okay. And then we'll get moving. This will open the door to the Indian Fire Department becoming a full-time ambulance service. Uh, doing that would require a town meeting vote to establish the budget and approval by the Board of Selectmen. Keep in mind that our Monday to Friday daytime firefighters that we established seven years ago, we still have that same Monday to Friday staff. We have not expanded it to a full-time service. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we've got the motion. We've got the second, we've got the first, we've got the first offer of discussion. Is there any questions or any other discussion? Again, keeping in mind, as I said when it started, as pointed out by Selectman Davenport, this is only about the introduction of the accounting line. It is not about whether or not we are going to have service. I allowed some latitude, I don't want it. maybe it's a little longer than it should, but just in case it might influence somebody's decision is why I did it. Um, any other questions or discussion? Um, I see one. Donna. Donna Hatchville Road, um, Chair of the Ambulance Oversight Committee, and I just want to make this perfectly clear that this is not a recommendation of the Ambulance Oversight Committee. Following that, I do have a question for you, Mr. Moderator, and I'd like to know if the town treasurer or town accountant, um, what they think for a necessity of such an account. And secondly, I'd like to know um, do the selectmen have a position on this article and do they see a necessity for it? Okay, so the question is so we'll start before we go to the selectmen, we'll go to our treasurer and our town captain. I appreciate Jim trying to use this tool to bring the whole ambulance issue. I think that uh, starting this fund is really putting the cart way before the horse. There's no way that, a, that responsible officials would get into the ambulance business without a thoroughly vetted operating budget, understanding how the thing is going to operate. There's no mechanism to collect any fees. So uh, this gave Jim a nice platform to discuss the, uh, the fact that we probably should look at municipal ambulance service. I don't think there's any reason to vote in favor of this. Town accountant, please. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, concern for me. I appreciate Jim's passion. What is the one? I think they can hear me. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate Jim's passion for this, but I have a concern, all right? I have used the ambulance three times in the last year. 
they've been very pleased with the results. Uh, I've also got my Medicare statement as to how much was charged and how much Medicare paid. And if I didn't have supplemental insurance, I'd have been paying an awful lot of extra money. So my question would be, all right, if the town was faced with that situation for a service they provided me without, and got only the Medicare amount, how are they gonna collect the money from me? Are they gonna are they gonna go after my house? Are they gonna what are they gonna do? So that's my concern. I, 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 I'm, I'm concerned that uh, we put people in a position after the fact. Gee which could I really afford this ambulance if I call? And I don't think that's fair. So, and the last thing we had was um, your second question that was from uh, something from the selectmen, a comment yeah. from the selectmen. What's the selectmen? Yep. What is, what is it? Andrew Payne, this is the petition, which is his right. Yep. Okay. So, what the selectmen's answer on this is they have not discussed this nor had a, have a formal position on it as a board yet, but very important, very important. This is a citizen petition request, and that's what town meeting is for. The selectmen are absolutely did the right thing by allowing the question. They do not necessarily have to have a position at this time. Um, so I, I saw some frustration, but just know this was done right by them. Um, I really want to get to the vote, so let's we'll do we'll do you in the back, sir, please. You have send it all night. Uh, Richard Hughes, we need drive. I was wondering if it would be appropriate to ask the fire chief his opinion on this situation because it's going to directly impact his department and how they are. Okay, so I, I, I understand and appreciate the question, but now we're really starting to get much further afield. This again is a question about establishing an accounting procedure, not about whether we're going to have ambulance service. Robin, I'm going to I'm going to stop here um, because we're we're really starting to kind of just take sides on the ambulance operation which is not what the question is for. If you defeat the question, it's done. And then they can come back and have another discussion or approach it again. So I'm the moderator at my discretion, I'm moving the question. This requires a majority vote in order to establish the accounting procedure. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion fails. We are now on to Article 17, Fiber Optic Program Borrowing, to see if the town will authorize the treasurer to borrow a sum of money or to continue the program to build a town-wide fiber optic system or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, I move the town take no action on this article. Second. So you jumped on you jumped on Article 17. Yes. Sorry. We're on 17. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Um, there's uh, hold on one sec. Let's let's address that. There are a couple of warrant questions. There was a warrant question that was withdrawn. Is that the one? Yeah. So the HWRSD capital question was withdrawn. I think that now the warrant had to be reposted on the town website. I think the initial warrant that was there may have had that question, but it was reposted. So we are on track. Okay. All right. What do you got, Mr. Moderator? I move the town take no action on this article. Second. So we have a motion and a second to take no action. Does the advisory committee have a recommendation? Advisory committee recommends favorable action. For no action. For no action. All right. So we have so we have a motion and second, but I believe the fiber optic folks do want to make a bit of a presentation. So there you go. All right. Thank you. I just want to give a brief overview of what we've been doing the last year or so with our fiber optic exploration in town. Uh, some of you may remember the last two town meetings we went to vote for establishing an MLP in town, which we've done, and it's required by the state in order to explore fiber optics. Um, after that, we then received a $250,000 community compact grant to start the exploration process with Whip City. Um, with their help, we've been able to 
complete or near completion of phase one with 100% grant funding. Dwarf City is here just to give a short presentation now, and what our hopes are is that with this presentation, it'll give residents an opportunity to think of questions and come to some of our community impact sessions that we're going to have in the future. We're going to try to establish some outreach programs just to gain more input and get the knowledge out there of what's going on. But I just want to give them the floor now just to kind of give a brief overview of what's been happening in town. Thank you, Craig. Can everyone hear me okay? Don't worry, I know it's late at night, and Brian and my team is in the back will say, I like to be bold, be brief, and be gone. So first up, just introductions. I'm Katrine Farreter. I'm the Director of Customer Service and Sales, and I've been at Westfield Gas and Electric with City Fiber since the beginning, and I've been at the company for nine years. And we have Brian Sullivan, who's the liaison for the town of Camden, who we've been engaged with for the last two years through Bob Markle and Craig, with the help of Pam as well. And then in the back, we do have Andrew Short, Jamie Cicado, who's our fiber foreman, supervisor, and then Jane, who's in customer service. So we're just going to do a brief overview of the benefits of a fiber to the home network and who we are. We can go to the next slide. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, so Westview Gas and Electric is a municipal. So they're. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry. So we are. Is this okay? Okay, thank you. So we are a municipal as well as the town of Camden, so there is a benefit of municipals to municipals. And at our company, we have over 18,500 electric customers, as well as 15,000 Whip City Fiber customers in 19 communities. So basically, we work with towns and advise them how to build their own network. So it would be an asset to the town of Camden. So right now, we're currently going through the design and engineering. We're not yet, sorry. The main ready pool application that Craig had mentioned for the submissions, so we can attach fiber to the pools. Proceed. And then Hampton has 64.2 miles, 7.10 miles of underground distribution, and we've actually batched 16 pool applications through National Grid as well as uh, Verizon. And you can proceed to the next one. Yes. And then, so you can proceed to the next one. Sorry, we have some extra ones. Oh, this is perfect. So for the last seven years, we've partnered with 19 communities, as I had mentioned, for a turnkey solution. So what that means is we do design and engineering, customer service, IT, construction. And through the pandemic, there really is a benefit of fiber to the home. Uh, as many of you know, during the pandemic, you had to work remotely, or uh, some of you might have had students at home, or if you're a doctor, then sending files is a great value for fiber to the home. We actually currently are engaged with the town of West Springfield as well. So we have a 10 year agreement with the town of West Springfield, uh, and we've been approached by your neighbors, East Long Meadow, because this really is the future. And then we also engage with the town of Southwick, and then Southampton as well has reached out to us. And then you can see the footprint. But basically, something we want to emphasize is it's your network, the town of Hamden's network, and we just work through the process. The only thing that we own is the router in the home, but we would work through that entire process with you folks. I don't get too much into the detail, but what we're trying to do is build trust with the town of Hamden because we are, we want to be your trusted partners through the entire process. So with that being said, we would have multiple information sessions to teach everyone how to cut the cord, how to stream, because this is internet only, as well as phone only. You can move to that, thank you. Yep, so short and sweet, uh, but we are, we are happy to be here, and thank you for inviting us. So again, the the issue, the vote here is to take no action. But we simply wanted to afford the fiber optic folks to let you know what's been going on. As you remember, at two prior town meetings, we had secret ballot as to whether or not to establish the core for having our own fiber optic network for our community. Those votes were both successful. This is part of the next steps in that process. 
As of now, there's no borrowing to, or no request for funds, raise appropriate, borrow. There's, it's simply just allow the opportunity to have the report heard. So our vote right now is to take no action on this article. It's a majority vote. All those in favor of no action? Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Article 18, Senior Center Design Funding. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate borrow or transfer from unappropriated available funds the sum of money to fund the design of an expansion project for the Hamden Senior Center or take any other action relative thereto. Who's making that motion? We have it. Yep. Right up there. My name is Don Collins uh, from 721 Main Street in town. Uh, I would like to report. Don, Don, hold on. First, we need your motion. I believe it's going to be no action, so you can give a brief overview. Okay. So we need a reason to introduce the article. So I believe your motion is for no action. We've got a motion and a second. Um, again, I know the night gets long, but this is an opportunity to just have an overview come from these folks. They are not asking for any funds right now. This will be a no-action vote. It's simply an opportunity for you to hear where they are. Okay, I would like to report on the background and notification of upcoming plans in the Hamden Senior Center building uh, in 2019. Uh, the uh, Council on Aging, the board of the Senior Center, uh, requested that the selectmen undertake a study on the current and future needs of the 23-year-old Senior Center building. Uh, the selectmen uh, appointed a Senior Center building committee consisting of 10 community members and contracted with the EDM, a design firm, to do a feasibility study. The building committee has met uh, two times a month in the past five months to review, critique, and modify this preliminary plan and to consider looking uh, at the needs of the center for the next 25 years, uh, whether it would require renovations or possible additions. Uh, uh, the review is still ongoing. Tonight, as you entered, you received uh, a survey that we're asking you to, we're trying to collect input from the town uh, on what uh, we should undertake and consider in looking at this uh, plan. Once the study is finalized, a request will be made at a future town meeting for funds for the final design, which could improve, could uh, be approved with uh, drawings and architectural designs. Once the final plan design is completed, a request will be made at another future town meeting for funds to fund this plan. No funds are requested or required you know, tonight. At this time, uh, the report is merely to inform the townspeople of this ongoing project and to solicit your input. Are there, again, this was to hear the report. Does anybody have any questions or are we prepared to move to the vote to take no action? Looks like we're prepared for the vote. All those in favor of taking no action? Are there any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> article 19. Article 19 is a very long article. I'm not going to read the entire article, simply the introductory part but I would expect or hope that someone from the planning board will be able to provide a summary as to what is being asked of the town to consider here and for the motion. So article 19 is to see if the town will vote to amend the Hampton zoning bylaws as follows or take any other action. Somebody from the planning board, I believe, is on this motion. Amend article 19. there you are. Here. 
I move that the town vote to amend the Hamden zoning code by first adding subsection 3, the text of which is set out in the warrant, to subsection 6.11 of section 6.1, and then adding to section 2 definitions a new definition 2.1, the text of which is set out in the warrant, then remembering section 2 as required. We've got a motion, we've got a second to amend the zoning bylaws. Um, would you like to give a brief overview, please, of what you're hoping to accomplish here? Um, just as a list of the summary, basically we're providing an opportunity for an owner of a single family home to assist family members by allowing use of rooms in a single family residence as an accessory apartment. So, more or less in all apartments. Are there any questions? Of... Yes, sir. I'm very concerned about this. There's been a lot of people to take advantage, turn it into a two family home, charge rent to those people. I don't see how it can be enforced. The wording is kind of vague. You can see people come and go through it and do what they want to do. And I don't see how it can be advantage to the town. Our property values will go down with these two family homes. I just do not like the idea of this. Yes, sir. Fat. Uh, Fat, but I don't serve them. To me, this sounds like. Someone said earlier something that the state is shoving down our throat. Why, why would anybody want to do this? Um, okay, um, is, that, is that a question? Is that, that sounds that's a question. Yeah, why would anybody want to do this? Right. Um, so, has the planning board been approached? I mean, what the, the history here? No, we were not approached by the state for this. This was something that we decided to take action on to provide an opportunity for people to help out their families and need. Have people asked for this? I'm sorry. Have what, residents asked for this? Well, I've been on the planning board, but I've not been approached by anyone requesting a second residence on their own. No, but nobody living in town has asked for it. No. Right. So. Okay, so. So, take it. I'm I'm not just doing for my junior takes care of the checkbooks. I've also been 25 or 30 years on the zoning board of appeals. Obviously, from my disagreement with the planning board earlier, we don't interact a whole lot. We're on the same page. When I read this bylaw, I was a little bit skeptical about it, so I started digging into it a little bit. I understand it's a pretty close copy to the one that's been effective in Wilbraham, so the wording has been vetted on it. It is an imperfect bylaw, however, the current situation is there are people running mother-in-law apartments without any control whatsoever. Um, by enacting this bylaw, you're allowing the planning board to have some tool to have oversight into how these are used and how they'll transition. We all know people who've got illegal apartments in their house right now, and the planning board has no way to get to it. The best parallel I can see was when we put in the home occupation rule. People were running home occupations if they could get away with it without anybody complaining. By putting in a home occupation bylaw, it gave a tool for people to actually apply for a permit to do it. And now we know who's got it and we've got some oversight. They will have to, in order to get an apartment, uh, an in-law apartment, they will have to ask permission. That puts them on the record of what family member is there. I know it's an imperfect law, but I think it's an improvement in the process because it's happening now and we have no control over it. Before we go any further, because I know there's another question, I did make, I did error. Um, the planning board, you have a recommendation for this motion. I'm, it's your motion, but it's advisory. The, the planning board also makes a recommendation, is my understanding. They're in favor of it. <laughs> it's usually that simple. Every now and then there can be a split vote and advisor can express it. Advisor recommends favorable action. Okay, so we've got, we've got both. All right, now I know there's another question. Jack. Jack. It's not so much a question, um, a little history. I've been on, I was on the planning board quite a while ago. 13 years ago when I first got on the planning board, this had come up, this issue had come up, and um, the planning board did not uh, take action on it at that time. This is, as uh, Mr. Patello had said, it's not a perfect bylaw. I have been in contact with the uh, zoning enforcement officer in Wilbraham, 
and it does take some effort to enforce it. They've been doing this for a long, long time. Our bylaw, the bylaw that's here tonight, mirrors that, um, mirrors that, if you will, bylaw in Wilbraham. So there is, um, there will have to be somebody that makes sure that this is uh, a bylaw. I, yes, sir, let's go with one more. Go ahead. So if we can go forward with this, where are the funds to enforce this going to come from? The building inspector is the zoning enforcement officer for the town. So if we're not able to enforce those people that the, I heard somebody say that there are existing ones that we know, I don't know, but I heard it said that they know there's apartments and existing ones. If we're going to allow people to take a separate side door in terms of the exit, well, that's to the right for people renting out these parts. I'm just very concerned about that. Fair enough. Any, okay, any other questions? I'm, I'm, one in the back, go ahead. Um, this is not in any way going to that group of rent. I have a problem with I do not believe are they, that they're addressed in the zoning change. And I'm sorry, can we get your name for the record, please? Linda Perry. All right, so, all right, um, let's, one more, please. Yes, I'm Heather Beebe, and I'm also on the planning board, and I just want to mention another part of this bylaw that might put some people's minds to rest, and that is when there's a transfer of property from one to another with a sale, there's a requirement um, in the bylaw that says the owner of the current um, single-family home um, that has such an accessory apartment will file um, uh, on a subject property a declaration of covenants. So this is a legal document that is in the uh, Registry of Deeds, and this will follow the home through any purchase, and any sale and purchase, um, and therefore be able to uh, allow us to track when such a home is sold. And at the time of the sale, if the new owner does not um, remove cooking facilities for this accessory apartment, which is the really fundamental thing that makes it an accessory apartment, um, they will not be issued the same permit. So they would have to come back to the to the planning board to get a new permit. Uh, so there, if you read the bylaw carefully, there are a lot of um, checks and balances, shall we say, and a lot of consideration into creating um, a bylaw that um, promotes the single family appearance of the home and does not make it look anything like a, um, a, a two uh, unit house. Um, there, it's limited to just two bedrooms, limited in square footage, the many, many um, limiting requirements. And as has been mentioned, um, people are already doing this, and uh, this is a, a uh, a bylaw revision that is looking to the future so that we can um, promote the single family appearance and function of our town uh, given the economic hardships that so many people have these days. Okay. Um, John Flynn would like to make a comment. I, I was on the planning board for a number of years, just like John was, and I can say that I think every year I have that same comment. My mother in law wants to move in with me. What do I do? Or you're suffering enough already, you would be in the town of <laughs> But this does provide that opportunity for the homeowner to get value back in their home, for actually the town to assess that value and protect the investment they have, and to do it right. Heather said it 100%, the safeguards are in the bylaw. The other thing about zoning bylaws, as Don will tell you, having done it for a number of years, they're not in granite. If something you think needs to be tweaked, they're back here next year closing that loop, they're going to get it right. But this is going to help a lot of people's lives. Your daughter wants to move home with her kids. You need to help her out. It's a family thing. Sir, you're 100% right. We're not looking for rental properties. We're not looking for, all of a sudden, your mother-in-law was there, she moves out, a couple college kids come in and are throwing a kegger every night. 
The protections are there for the zoning enforcement officer to stay on top of that. So are you telling me that if my mother-in-law gets sick, I would not be able to bring her to live in my home because I have an extra bedroom? That's living in, but if she wants a little independence, you can make it like her own little area. Maybe she wants a kitchenette because she wants to be independent per se. This would allow that. So it just seems to me that if you have family members live with you, why do you need the separate area with separate cooking, separate sinks? Every family is different. Every family is different. Yeah, that's okay. All right. I think we're there. Kata, can we be brief? Yeah. I have a few problems with this. I agree with the in-law apartment, but not if there are cooking facilities. If you want a microwave, that's fine. If it's family, you can eat your meals together. A lot of these are older people who may be forgetful about cooking on stoves. I think we're going to have more fires. All right, everybody, let her finish. Let's say two bedrooms, and two bedrooms would probably require a whole new septic system. That's, you know, maybe one, maybe you can go to three or four, but this is too much. There are some problems with this, and I'd like to see them addressed before we do something. So part right. of the bylaw is that they have to go to the board of health? Because if we're going to have something new, we'll have some more conversation, but we don't need a reaction. So. Yeah, Rick, she wanted to respond to her statement. Oh, I'm sorry. So Please. the new septic is required for accessory apartment. That's on the homeowner's expense. So that is there a choice to come forward with it? Okay. Thanks, Max. Sorry about that. Watch us through the questions. Let's, there's a young lady um, oh, right next to Heather B. Oh, Christina Broder. I'm also on the planning board. I just strongly encourage folks to really bring this through even as we're sitting here now. There are many safeguards, like you mentioned, for a lot of these concerns. It is up to the department, you know, uh, the Board of Health to go through the water supply, the sewage disposal facilities. It's all in here. Safeguards to continue the appearance of a single family home. The entrances are. It, 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 really thought this out and I don't know if anybody was on the phone or in attendance but when we went through this language we combed through it as best we could to make sure that this is something that helps out residents within the community and is not an opportunity to have any healthy families or anything of that nature. It, we really try our best to safeguard all of these concerns and I, I truly believe they are all right now in here. Um, and I know it's very long, <laughs> but um, that's, that's beneficial. It's, it's very beneficial. Something new, Ted? Sure, sure, one quick thing. Ted, she was such a guy. If you remember, we just turned down the master plan, and in our statement of turning it down, we said that we would enforce our zoning bylaws. Zoning bylaw enforcement offset no master plan. Okay. All right. All right. This requires a two-thirds vote as it is a change to the zoning. So let's take a look at the vote first. All those in favor? Any opposed? The two-thirds is declared. Article 20. Easement agreement with the National Grid. To see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen for and on behalf of the town upon such terms and conditions as the Board deems to be in the best interest of the town to convey to Massachusetts Electric Company, known as National Grid, a perpetual right and easement to construct, reconstruct, repair, maintain, operate, and patrol for the transmission of high and low voltage electric current and for the transmission of intelligence on overhead system lines, wires, and cables poles together with all equipment and appurtenances thereto said transmission installed over, across, under, and upon a portion of the town-owned land located at Cross Road and identified as tax ID parcels 19-85-0 and 19-86-1 to serve the town's property and others to be and others and be authorized the board of selectmen to take any and all action necessary for the purposes of accomplishing such easement conveyance which is approximately shown on attachment A of this annual town meeting warrant to take any other action related to the 
Oh, good job. Matter, move that the town vote to authorize the board of selectmen as stated in Article 20 of the warrant for May 8, 2023 annual town meeting for the approximate location of the easement shown in attachment A being updated by the approximate location shown in exhibit B as provided for this town meeting. So we've got a motion. Do we have a second? Yes. Motion second. Does the advisory committee have a recommendation? Advisory recommends favorable action. Okay. Is there any discussion? Any, can you, um, Gary? I have just a question probably for the town council. Under that, the Eastman agreement, if they strip a hole in the ground and poke through our uh, liner that we got over there, uh, are they responsible for re the repair of that liner? location is being checked and has to be approved by the to avoid exactly that problem. And so, um, with respect to liability, I would assume that, um, you know, that could be a term that could be included in the agreement and the terms and conditions as desired by the selection. <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? Connie. We can't hear you, Connie. Okay, the, uh, the transverse station has one of the most wonderful views in the whole of Camden. I like it better than the one at Oak Lawton. Um, it's wonderful, it's in our old state plan as a wonderful system for us to look at. We have lost that replacement of the solar system because already, I don't know who shows in the dust, but I know what you do, and I don't know what the way it looks up. Connie? And then, if you're going to put the transmission on it, yes. Have to stop you. You're outside the bounds of the question. Okay, I, I'm trying to get to that. Okay, and quicker. These lines are being put above ground. I don't remember this being in our town meeting that we did go to have solar, and I voted for it. But if there is any way that these lines can go underground and just make it safe a little bit of our view. At least for the sky over our mountains. I really, I, I think that should be done. It can't be. Okay. Connie, sorry for the abruptness, but I just need to bring it back and we have to stay on point. Any other questions? I see John Matthews. Just one quick one. If approved, will the uh, plan go to the planning board for their file? That's all. If we approve that this plan should go to the planning board to go into the file. The select members said they will make sure that all necessary filings are executed upon approval. Okay, that, I get it. Okay, um, anything else? Now this is important. This involves tone out town owned land, so this is also going to re this is going to require a two thirds vote because again it is our property. Um, all those in favor? Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 21, funding for Hampton's 150th anniversary events. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate sum of money to prepare for activities surrounding the 150th anniversary of the founding of the town of Hampton in 1878 or take any other action relative thereto. We have a motion. Mr. Bondaway, or move that the town vote. Pursuant to General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53I, to raise an appropriate $10,000 of the fund for the celebration in 2028 of Hamden's 150th anniversary as an independent town. We, uh, we have a motion. We have a second. I'm not going to go over there, so you're good. Advisory. Advisory Committee recommends favorable action. <laughs> no, we're not going to second it. <laughs> All right, anybody have any questions? I mean, I think it's somewhat self-explanatory. Our 150th anniversary is coming up. <laughs>
I think he said 10,000. 10, the work to accumulate some every year, probably a little more as it comes along. For those who were around in 1978, you saw it on the cover of the town report. We had a pretty good celebration at Dark Burns, especially the school. Fireworks, the whole thing. Rick, you were around then. So we're looking to do the same type of thing. But we have to start now. We have to hit it all in one year. We'll start putting a little away, a little away, and then we'll be looking for people to serve on the anniversary committee. $10,000 a year until 2018? Yeah. Oh, probably more. Fireworks aren't cheap. Well, you said 10000 We're starting at 10000 probably this a little year. more a year. Okay, this year. Yes. Do you see anybody volunteer? Not yet. No. Is there a, what? I'm sorry. Was there a hear a comment? Robin, go. It's a great idea. We're all going to hopefully we'll be around at, in four years. People are living on limited budgets. You know, uh, I don't know what you guys, but I just, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. You've already been putting out a lot of money. A lot of people have limited income. People are trying to retire. Um, All right, here we go. for you. Let them come on their own part. All right. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? And John's going to keep whacking me in the back until you all know that they need volunteers. Uh, so that said, the motion is for $10,000. It's raised and appropriate. It's a majority vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 22, Assessor's Funding for State Mandated Programs. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate or transfer from unappropriated available funds a sum of money to meet the requirements of the Massachusetts Department of Revenue mandated programs or take any other action relative thereto. It's our favorite word, mandated. Moderator. I move that the town raise and appropriate $16,000 to the Assessor's Department for Fiscal 2024 Massachusetts Department of Revenue Mandated Requirements. We have a second. We have a motion and a second for $16,000. Advisor. Advisor recommends favorable action. Are there any questions to the Assessors on this? Robin. Yes, sorry. It's okay. It's what we're here. Uh, I just I mean, we have a board of assessors. We already have 148,000 for in that purpose. What is this expense that's not covered under what we're already So why is this a separate expenditure? Right. Yep. It's a board of code we spend every year. We have a consulting firm that works with us. Every year we have to supply a certain amount of funds to take care of it. The budget can be soft $148,000. That's primarily our internal budget that we work with. But on every year, we will take a separate board article for paying off the bills that we need to hire them. So the principal assessors, they don't go around assessing, they hire themselves? Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, Dick. One of the reasons is outside of the budget. If you remember, we used to have an assessor stabilization fund. We put money in, we put money back out. And we, we, this is actually a more streamlined process. The problem that they have is they don't exactly know how much they're going to spend. And our fiscal year ends July 1st. Their assessing project goes basically February through October. So they were having a real problem matching those funds. When anything they didn't spend by July 1st, they couldn't have anymore. So that's why we fund it as a separate article. So it gives them flexibility as far as the calendar dates that they spend the money. Any other questions? Seeing none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Article 23, school resource officer. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate or transfer from unappropriated available, fu unappropriated available funds 
a sum of money to fund the school resource officer for FY 2023 at Minichog Regional High School or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $11,650 to fund the school resource officer for fiscal year 2023 at Minichog Regional High School. Second. A motion and a second to raise and appropriate. Advisory? Advisory recommends favorable action. This is a question we see every year on the warrant. That said, are there any questions from the floor? Ted? 23? Yes. Yes. It's always backward. Every single year. It's for in the year based on the hours the officer puts in and they don't know that when the year starts. So it's always billed. Fair enough. Any other questions? Another majority vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Advisory committee reserve fund to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from unappropriated available funds a sum of money from the advisory committee reserve fund to take any other action relative thereto. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $25,000 for the advisory committee reserve fund. Got a motion? We got a second. How do you feel about your own motion? Fabulous. You recommend favorable action. Any questions? Peter? What are the funds for? These are funds that we can use for extraordinary or unforeseen expenses that happen throughout the year to support other departments. So some years we don't spend any of it and some years we do need to utilize it if we have some unforeseen expenses. Example, please. Hold on. Go ahead. We just can't have it shouted out. Go ahead. We're asking for $25,000 this year and so I want to expect that you're going to be asking every year for something but you're funding for unforeseen things. Well, what have you used these funds for last year? So we will, I'm not sure we even, did we use any last year? I don't think we did but in the past if a department has a line item that's overrun, say for utilities that they weren't expecting, then they would come at the end of the fiscal year and reconcile those accounts and ask for a line item transfer out of this reserve account into their account. So it's to support the town's expenses when things have gone south and they've had an expense that they didn't anticipate at the time that they put their budget in. What I can offer you is as when I was on the Board of Selectmen in years past, if we had a year where it became unseasonably cold and maybe it might be the senior center or another town building, their utility cost was higher than anticipated because of the cold snap. This creates the fund available to supplement that budget and that's why some years it doesn't get used at all. Robin. Sorry, if it's not used, where does that fund, does it go back into the general expenses of the Appropriations Fund if it's not used? It becomes part of free cash because it's not expended. Is there any way you can transfer money from another account to cover that instead of creating an appropriation for a tax hike? Let's go to the Treasurer. Sometimes that's a possibility. One thing I want to remind you is the reason that this money is entrusted to the Advisory Committee is the Advisory Committee is your agents for the town meeting to inform you. Everyone on the stage works for the government. These are volunteers who their main job is to analyze the budget and report to the town meeting. So that's why you trust them with this money and not the Selectmen. Sometimes that happens, but you know, it's, you can only, there's limits on what you can transfer. You can't transfer a police bill, money to pay a police bill out of the fire department, say. You could possibly, with the accountant's approval, do something within the same department. But, you know, if Academy Hall or something has a big electric bill, it happens, then that's where the money comes from and not there. So, Robin. No, this is the tool we use. So there are some line item transfers at the end of the year, but they'd have to be for, within similar departments or similar purpose. This gives us more flexibility. And when we don't use it, again, it goes back to free cash. This is the only flexibility we have throughout the year to pay for any extraordinary expenses. 
$25,000 on a $15 million budget is our flexibility. Okay. Can I, can I access that fund if my electric bill is tripled this winter? You have to get behind me. So it's ten flies. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, no, it, it no, is. No, this is just inter. Within yes. the town departments, within all those line items we just read in the budget. And it does require advisory committee approval. It's not a free pass. So we, we are expected to, the town departments are expected to run their budgets within the numbers they're given. Yeah, this is unforeseen. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. And we are on to 25. Thank you. It's about to throw that page away. General stabilization fund. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from unappropriated available funds a sum of money or deposit into the general stabilization fund or take any other action relative thereto. Motion. I move that the town take no action on this article. Second. We have a motion and a second to take no action on this article. Once again, how do you feel about what you're doing? Favorable action. So the advisory committee and the motion is made and seconded to take no action on this article. Are there any questions? Peter. How much money do they have? This. Hold on. Every year they have to take a 1.1 million million to get it. So the stabilization account right now is at $2.13 million. <laughs> The, so you, you've got the number. Okay. I'm sorry, Peter. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't miss something else. Thank you. Any other questions? So the motion and the second are to take no action on this article. It requires a majority vote. All those in favor of no action. Are there any opposed? The motion carries. I think we're into the home stretch. Yeah, no, you got one more. Reducing the tax rate. Article 26, to see if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money from unappropriated available funds or from the general stabilization fund for the purpose of reducing the tax rate for fiscal year 2024 or take any other action relative thereto. I move that the town take no action on this article. There's, the motion has been made and seconded to take no action on this article. Point of information? Yes, sir. Mr. Monroe, you know I have a tremendous amount of respect to the advisory committee and all the work they do as volunteers, and as do you, I'm sure. It has come to my attention that after many years of ser service, this is Carol's last night serving a, a town meeting on the advisory, and I think we owe her all thanks. So you jumped the gun on the vote. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you, you took away my opportunity to talk her out of retirement. Oh, you're killing me. All right, hold on. I was afraid. Hold on. Um, so we do have, this is the point where we do have to have discussion, if any, on the question to transfer to reduce the tax rate. Peter. We got over $2 million in the kitty one from zero into reducing our tax. Yeah. Advisory committee. This is just not the right time for us to do that, Peter. That's what we typically take up at fall town meeting when we have a sense of free cash. We have our stabilization. We know we're getting closer to setting the tax rate, so we would know how much we would need to use from any particular funds in order to mitigate the increase on the tax rate. So that's what we do that at um, fall town meeting and not at annual town meeting. Every year we have. 1 million, 1.5, and so now it grows, and you put a little to nothing in the reduction of your tax, something's wrong. That, that's actually not true. We just do it at a different time, not at annual town meeting. We do it at the fall town meeting. It hasn't been done at this meeting also. Uh, not since I've been on here for 17, 18 years, and I don't really recall that happening in that time frame. It's, it's the fall town meeting is the timing that suits that um, action best. I'm going to take the vote before. Uh, I'm going to take the vote before we entertain a motion to adjourn. I have one thing to say. But first, the vote. 
The vote to take no action on the transfer to reduce the tax rate requires a majority vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion carries. Before we adjourn, a personal note. Carol Fitzgerald and I grew up together. She got out of high school in four years. I think it took me six. Um, but I appreciated her looking back and checking on me. This town has been incredibly well served by Carol. And the Miller family, of which is her maiden name, is one of the finest families we've ever had and have de generated their time to almost everything from Minichaw High Athletics all the way to the library and the School of Green Meadows. They're a wonderful family. They're on par with the burgers and we're served by none better. Thank you.